Hi everybody, welcome along to what is going to be your weekly ICC cricket update. And joining me is Jeetan Patel on my right here, Black Cap. Um, no doubt missing the World Cup, Jeetan, but um, I guess first, most importantly, we just want to acknowledge the the strife and the grief that's going on in Christchurch uh, after this earthquake. Uh, everybody knows about it, and Jeetan, it's affecting the cricket world as well. Uh, I, I know there's plenty of black caps over there that have roots in Canterbury. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously Brennan who lives there and, and Hamish Bennett's from there, but it's also the support staff, which are quite a key, key, key part of that team, and they've got families there, and I'm sure they're all hurting. Also affects you too, because domestically um, you were due to play Canterbury tomorrow, but that match has been called off. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really affect us too much in, in the grand scheme of things. So obviously our game's been postponed, we'll just play at a later date when it suits other teams. So it's not a biggie on, it, on our part, to be fair. As far as the Black Caps go, what could this do to the team? Is it galvanising or could there be some guys that are, are quite affected by it? Have you heard from any of the, of the guys? Uh, not, not so many of the guys over there. I saw some Facebook postings, on, not on my Facebook page because I don't have one, but <laughs> on my partners about uh, some of the partners that are, that are leaving Christchurch. Um, I think they're looking forward to getting to India and just getting out of there for a while. But uh, I think the players themselves um, would, would just take it on board and, and try and do extra extra for those that are there. Yeah. Fair enough. Let's have a look back, Jeetan, at the New Zealand-Kenya match. Uh, we won't have pictures of it because uh, you had to set record for about 20 minutes and we missed it. Um, it was a hiding. Yeah, it was. It was a great win. Great win for the guys, morale boosting. And I, I think it's just, for, it's just good for the New Zealand public to see us do well at, at, after a long time. What can we take from it, though? I mean, everybody's talking about Hamish Bennett and a great bowling performance, but was he merely just bowling wicket to wicket and they were missing it, or was it, was it a special performance? Well, I think it's a special performance. Any cricket game you win on the international stage is a good win. And, you know, Southie took three for, Oram got three for, and, and Bennett got four for. So there's your ten wickets. It shows that our seamers are probably doing a good job for us, whether they are just Kenya or, or we're hitting good areas. I mean, that's for, the, that's for someone else to decide. But uh, to take ten wickets... And 23 overs is a good effort, no matter who you play. And a real morale boost, as you mentioned. It's, um, I guess they'll have it in context that um, it was Kenya, but a win must be great going into a game against Aussie. Yeah, a win's a win, and especially if you are playing Aussie at the World Cup and you've come off some bad... Well, some performances that haven't been great. I wouldn't say bad, but just haven't been great. And I think the guys will be excited about the next opportunity. They may feel a little bit daunted by the fact that they haven't played enough, but uh, they'll be excited. Let's have a look at South Africa against West Indies, which is tomorrow night. Um, South Africans, I know our cricket bookmaker really rates them. You can see there is at $1.33 they've shortened in because of some money that's gone on them. The West Indies, though, <coughs> $3.10. Could they be slightly underrated? There's some strong players there. Yeah, they've got a strong batting lineup. That's my issue. I mean, they've just got strong batters up front. And even though the South African side have a good bowling lineup, I just think they could they could possibly go the distance early doors. But um, what, what, what will happen in the middle stages of the game will be the important part for the West Indies. They struggled against spin in, in the previous game. So it, it will be an interesting game. I think the South Africa look like a tough side to beat. It's an all-round game. I mean, you got... Amla, Callis, Smith, De Villiers, Dumini. I mean, there's five batters there that at a world world class already. So, you know, it's it's going to be a battle of runs. But um, but I just think with the West Indians missing Carlton Bourne and Adrian Barrath, which are two batters, one of which is a wicket keeper, um, it may mean that they've had to bring in some younger guys. The West Indies, as you mentioned, they're very strong batting. They've got Shiv Chander pull back. Um, <clears throat> we've all seen Chris Gale, massive. Um, Bravo, he, he can absolutely light it up as well. He, here's their team here. Very strong at the top, but it's the bowling that's a little bit unknown. It's just a little bit suspect, you know. Darren Sammy, Devin Thomas, Nikita Miller, Suleiman Ben, you, you just don't know what you're going to get. I think you know you, what you're going to get from Dwayne Bravo, but, but outside that, oh sorry, and Chris Gale, outside that you're not sure. Mm. Where would you be leaning towards in this game? Uh, I mean, even if you went from the past, South Africa won 16 of their last 25 games against them. They've had three losses and six no results or draws. So you'd sort of say stats-wise that South Africa going to get up. Um, they, they look like a side that's probably going to go all, you know, to the semi-finals at least and whatever happens from there is just a one-off game. Cool. All right, the uh, New Zealanders against the Australians Friday night was going to be massive. Um, they're the two teams we know the most about in this country, um, obviously New Zealand and Australia. We've watched the Ashes with passion. Really contrasting styles, these two sides. 
Yeah, I mean, once obviously the batting, I don't think is an issue. The, both teams have got good power hitting and good good batters all throughout the lineup. But it's the bowling that's the thing that, that really strikes me as a contrast because Aussie are going to go on with four quicks and maybe a couple of part time spinners, but we're going to go with two full time spinners and three medium paces. I would have thought, and then Styrus and Franklin to help out. Um, the the thing that that gets me is that New, New Zealand feels good. You know, they feel good about their game. They, they've just beaten Kenya. Even though it was just Kenya, they humped Kenya. You know, they beat them by a long way. Um, we love playing Australia. doesn't matter where it is. And the stats are actually a little bit closer than we think they are. So it'll be interesting for me. I mean, it's a day game. So the seamers might come into it early morning because they start at 9.30. Yep. But, um, but well, yeah, I'm excited, yeah. Looking at that New Zealand lineup there, I'm just wondering if you think they might plump for Nathan McCullum to open the bowling again. Yeah, I think they will. Uh, they may just take in the two seamers unless they decide to bring Mills back in. He is one of our most successful one-day bowlers, but if you go on the last performance, do you drop him? You know, I mean, do you not pick him again because we did well? Um, I think Nathan will open so that um, Styrus can bowl 10 straight through the middle. But uh, it'll be interesting if he does because we know that Shane Watson's very good against soft spin. Just looking at that top run scorer for, for New Zealand, um, Brendan McCullum looked a bit... A bit dusty at the top of the order, didn't he? Like, he, need, he needs some batting. He just needed to play in a game. I, I think, you know, half the time you can bat as much as you want in the nets but not get confidence. So I think if you can bat in a game, and even if you scrape out 30, they still feel better, better about yourself. And he did that. And Gu Guptill's obviously going really well. You've got Ross Taylor, who no one knows what's going to happen with him because he, some say he's out of form, but I still think he's at, clearly our best batter. And uh, Jake's running on, on good form as well, so... You never know what's going to happen, mate. But uh, I, I think I think we're a good chance against these, against these guys. Let's bring the Aussie team up now, Jeets. Um, boy, it's it's always powerful the Australian team, and just look at that top order. Um, they probably only need a couple to fire, and we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Very balanced side. Yeah, it is a very balanced side. My only thing is that they are missing a couple of spinners in the field. But if you think of their batting, they bat all the way down to Mitch Johnson. So there's a lot of batting there to to, to have and. Uh, my only my, my big thing is how how they deal with opening with a spin bowl. You know, if if they do come at Nathan and, and they get away with it, then New Zealand are on the big back foot big time, and uh, they'll have to reinvent the wheel, I suppose, while they're out there. Is there an issue with us? Like I'm looking at Lee Johnson. All their quicks are very good at bowling full and fast, and we're not so good at playing that. Uh, you say that, but we're going to be on slow wickets, so they're not going to be fast wickets. Uh, you know, the wicket at Nagpur is a good wicket, but it is also a little bit slow. So it may even work into our hands a little bit up front with McCullum, Guptill, Taylor being able to strike the ball right or being able to strike the ball down the ground if they do bowl full and straight. And that's what they've been working on the most is hitting straight. So hopefully they can, they can stick with hitting straight and, um, and the pace will help them out.